All right, let's do this. All right, so today we're gonna change it up and instead of doing my usual fly fishing videos like rainbows or brown trouts or something like that, we're instead gonna talk about my 10 top most disliked things about fly fishing. You know, these are my opinions. You can take them for what they are, but I feel like for the most part, other people who have been fly fishing for, I don't know, the last probably three to four years, probably share my opinion on this. All right, we'll do this video from uh, my least to my top dislike things because that way we can keep it interesting. Number 10, stop calling fly fishing a sport. Also, it's not a competition. Fly fishing is not that rigorous. Pulling off onto the side of the river to have a nice steak dinner and a glass of Cabernet is not what I consider a sport. A sport is something that requires some sort of athleticism. You don't really need that to stand in front of a drift boat. It's not that hard. I've done it. All right, number nine, calling a brown trout a German brown. I, I don't know where this started. Maybe in the 1880s when we started stocking rivers and streams in North America with browns, but we don't call them German browns anymore. There's no point in calling them a German brown. Unless you catch a brown trout and you pull it out of the water and it looks at you and says with an Austrian accent, get to the chopper. It's not a German brown. If anything, since it was probably a wild fish in North America, just call it an American brown. I gotta have a sip of beer for this one. All right, number eight. Stupid expensive nippers. Why are these things even a product? I recently found out that a fly fishing company was making nippers for $250. For $250, these things better be made out of some rare earth metal. Oh, wait, looks like they are. Do you really need a pair of rare earth metals to cut your 6X tippet when you're on the river? I could get a pair of nail clippers to do the same job. Also, if you need something this strong to cut your tippet, stop using steel wire because that's obviously the only thing that you'd really need these things to cut with. For $250, I'll list some other things that you can buy. A new set of waders, a new rod, a new reel, or a new rod and reel. Um, a new set of wading boots, a pair of wire cutters, or hedge clippers. The list goes on. Spend your money on something that's less showboaty and more let's get the job done. All right, number seven, which is probably honestly my favorite from this entire list, but not my top dislike. Guys who bite their fly rods when they're posing with a fish. Why are we still doing this, guys? It doesn't look cool. I mean, does the cork taste good? Are you seasoning the cork before you bite it? I need answers. And you're not doing the fly fishing community any justice by proving that we're not just a bunch of dorks. All right, for five and six, our special guest, huge fly fisherman, is gonna list his two most disliked things about fly fishing. Ben, take it away. Hey, I'm Ben. I'm a huge fly fisherman. You wanna know one of the worst things about fly fishing? YouTubers, man. The only reason they're doing it is they're chasing clout. They're full of bad advice. They don't know what they're talking about. Most of them are terrible at fishing, but their mom got them a really sweet camera, so now they think they should be a fly fishing YouTuber. Thanks, mom. But the worst part about fly fishing YouTubers is the hot spotting. Come on, do you not realize you're shooting yourself in the foot by naming spots? I would never name spots because I know it's wrong. Ruby River and the Swan Duck River, Salmon River, Willow Creek, Porcupine Creek, Missouri River near Cascade, Montana. If you happen to bump into a fly fishing YouTuber on the water, let them know how much they suck and that they're ruining the sport that you love. Thank you. Yeah, fly fishing YouTubers are incredibly annoying to run into on the river. What's worse is when one of them runs up to you with his GoPro and sticks it in your face and says, hey, why don't you name that fish before you put him back in? I don't know, Ben. I just met the fish. Let me get to know it first. Number five that Ben lists on here is hot spotting. If you hot spot, you just suck, man. Do you really need to tell everybody where you're fishing? If we told everybody where we were fishing, all the wonderful water that we like to go fish by ourselves and alpine lakes, they'd just be completely covered by imbeciles out there with fly rods. All right, number four, the guys that only fish trophy water. And I'm not talking about the guy who, you know, hires a guy to take him out on the river. This is the guy who fishes a really secluded stream somewhere or a secluded river for that matter. Catches, you know, five or six really big browns, really big rainbows, and then posts a tutorial about how he did it on YouTube. It's the stupidest thing. The only reason you're catching these incredibly large fish is because of a few things. One, they have an abundant source of food year round. Number two, the water levels and the temperatures do not fluctuate at all throughout the season. You have stable water and stable water temps. All right, number three, low holing or high holing me, or 
anyone else for that matter. If you don't know what high holing is, basically it's seeing somebody who's fishing a river and fishing either directly above, directly below, or hell, even in the same hole as them. One of the main reasons that I go out and fly fish is because I don't want to interact with anybody else. And if I do, I'm going to bring that person along with me. Number two, poor fish handling. If you don't know how to handle a fish and you've been fishing or fly fishing for more than two years, get with it guys. Anytime I see an Instagram post or a YouTube video and the fish is completely covered in dirt or looks dried out or dead, I'm probably going to dislike the video and leave you a very nasty comment under it because it just sucks. You're taking a large specimen that has survived for a very long time probably to reproduce later on and carry the same genetics as that fish had and you just killed it basically. Good job. There are plenty of YouTube tutorials on how to handle a fish properly. And if you don't know, you can always go to your local fly shop or your local fish and tackle shop and ask them how to hold a fish. And number one, this is my most disliked thing about fly fishing in the entire community. Now, if you Google just trophy trout stream in North Georgia, this is probably what's gonna pull up. This is a man-made river. It was dug out by an excavator in like the 1970s or 80s. Made it really deep so that way the fish could survive the harsh summers we have in Georgia. And then they stocked it with rainbows and browns. Over the years, the fish got increasingly larger because they were supplementing the fish with food and now it's advertised as a trophy trout stream. Okay. Sure. All of these fish are just pellet fed monsters. If you see any pictures of guys catching just massive browns or rainbow trout out of North Georgia, they're probably full of crap and have fished this exact river. If you consider this fly fishing, you're better off building an in-ground pool in your backyard, filling it up with about five or 10 big five pound rainbow trout, and then feed them every day and then fishing it. It'd be just the same thing. All right, well, that's all I have on this video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe to the channel, yada, yada, yada. Same usual subscriber stuff. And uh, make sure you go check out Huge Fly Fisherman's video. If you love satirical fly fishing or just being made fun of, this is the place to go. We'll see you there.